Yo guys, how's it going? Welcome back to creating a Minecraft mod without coding, part two. Now today we're going to be looking at making an ore that will generate in the world, and also making crafting recipes for different items. So, first let's focus on the recipes. What I want to be able to do is I want to be able to craft the block out of nine ingots. So, let's make that happen real quick, just by hitting the plus button and scrolling on down to recipe. Now we're going to enter the name of the recipe, so we can call this like Ardanium Ingot 2 Block. Remember, no spaces. If you want to indicate different words, you can use capitals. Now we're going to hit create new recipe, and you will see here a nice interface. And we can leave pretty much all of this except for recipe type. There's a bunch of different recipe types here where we can select how you want to craft it. So we can either do crafting, like a normal crafting table, smelting in a furnace, blast furnaces, smokers, stone cutters, and campfire. So we're going to just use crafting here. And if you set it to smelting or something, there'll be an XP reward. Because you know when you smelt something and then you take it out, it gives you some experience. So you can set how much experience you get from that there. But I'm on crafting, and crafting doesn't give you experience. Now what we can do is just come and click on these little tiles and fill them in with our items. So we're going to fill every tile here in with an Ardanium ingot. And I will be back with you once I'm done because this is going to take a long time. Alright, so once you've put in all of these Ardanium ingots, just remember you can click, select any block, and just double click it. Then you can click on the right side and put in what you want to get from it. This little number down here lets you select how many of the block or item you are going to get out of this crafting recipe. So we're just going to make nine Ardanium ingots into one Ardanium block. This little checkbox up here is crafting shapeless, will allow you to basically make recipes. For example, if I was going to do something like this, if we left it like this, then you have to put it in this furnace pattern. But if we checked that it's shapeless, then you can put the Ardanium ingots as long as it was 8, anywhere in the crafting grid. But it won't matter because I'm filling up every single spot anyway with my ingot. So I'm just going to leave this off. Now once we're done here, we can do save mod element. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one more thing where we can craft the Ardanium block back into ingots. So we can just add recipe and Ardanium block to ingot, create new recipe. We can leave all this stuff the same, and what we can do is put in one Ardanium block and put out nine Ardanium ingots. So we're going to set this to be nine. Now we're going to check is crafting shapeless, because we want to be able to put this block anywhere in the crafting grid and have it do the same thing. Now what we're going to do, hit save mod element, and there we go. So guys, here we are back in the tutorial test world, and as you can see, if we pop down a crafting table and we put in our Ardanium ingots, it makes one Ardanium block, and after we put that block back in, anywhere on the grid, we can turn it into nine Ardanium ingots. So you can see that this process has worked really well, sort of just how I envisioned it, acting the same as all the iron blocks and stuff. Now the next thing I want to do is be able to make an ore that I can mine from in the world, and when you mine it, you'll be able to smelt it, and it will give you one Ardanium ingot. So sort of ore generation, similar to iron again. I'm sort of going to replicate iron, except I'm going to make it better than even diamond, and likely better than netherite, because I like making OP tools. So what we're going to do here is add a new element, and we're going to go to block, and we're just going to make an ore for our, our object. Now here is the thing that we are going to need to be editing to make things generate. So this might look a little daunting, but you know, it's not really. <laughs> dimensions to generate in. What we're gonna want to do is just yeah, select the dimension that you want to generate in. So surface is overworld, and then the nether in the end. 
this is going to be an uh, overworld ore. It would probably look nice as an end ore because all the end stuff is sort of pink-ish. I'm going to go surface anyway for the overworld. Blocks this ore can replace. This is basically sort of like where it's going to generate. So we want to set it pretty much just to stone. Restriction biomes. So this is biomes that it can generate in. So like, you know, emeralds only generate in extreme hills. So you can do something similar to that with this. Although I'm going to leave it just every biome. Next, there is the average amount of ore groups per chunk and average amount of ores in a group. And really what that just means is the ores per chunk is how many times it's going to try to generate the ore in a chunk. And the ores in a group is sort of how many ores it's going to try to generate every time it tries to generate one of these ore groups. So it's really going to just require a lot of tinkering around, but if I open up the Minecraft wiki page for iron ore here, you can see it'll attempt to generate 20 times per chunk from size 1 to 14. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this to be 14 and 20. Now 20 is a little too common, I want this to be more rare than iron. I think we're going to set this to be um, 8 sounds good. 8 sounds like a good number for me. Now this minimal and maximal generation height is just going to be how low your ore can generate and how high it can generate. So once again, back on Minecraft Wiki, comparing it to normal ores, gold can go all the way down to 0, up to 31, which I feel is good, but I think I'm going to make it a little bit lower. You know, let's go um, 24. That seems like a good number. So to find this ore, we're going to have to be lower than Y level 24 and higher than zero, but zero is the bottom of the world. So you could set this to be higher if you want it to generate on the surface, which would be actually quite an interesting idea for an ore. Um, you could set that to be like 63, because I'm pretty sure 63 is surface level or the lowest that surface level can be. And then you can make the maximal generation height higher and then you can make it replace dirt so that it will, you know, replace the dirt. Also, if you wanted something really stupid, then you could set it to generate higher in the sky and set it to replace air. See what would happen there. That'd be quite interesting. Anyway, let's just save this element here. Those are just some ideas I was firing around. And now we have our ordinium ore with ore generation. Now, once this task down here finishes loading and Gradle is idle, we can hit this play button to load up Minecraft. And once Minecraft is loaded, we will be able to see our ore in action. Alrighty, here we are. Uh, I'm gonna go single player. We're actually gonna create a new world because this will have already generated the chunks around us. Let's just call this ore test. Eh, if I could type. <laughs> We're gonna go creative and just default world type. Let's do create. And here we are. I'll pop into spectator mode real quick. I'm gonna look for some caves down low. I'm going to try to find my ore. Here's some down here. You can see this is our ore right here. How many did it generate? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That made 13, so it was a fairly big vein. There's a lot more down here. Oh, I found some diamonds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. What I can do, but I'm not going to do it because this is a tutorial. I'll probably do it off camera before the next episode. Is I'm going to tweak it. So that it generates less, because this is a little bit too much for me. So maybe something like 4, instead of 8. And then also so that it generates in pockets of like 6, maybe? So it's a little bit more rare. Anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope it helped you out. And I will see you guys for episode 3, whenever it comes out. Bye!